Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, Ms. Reskin, do you realize that, uh, or this morning here, you have given very conflicting testimony a number of times with regards to your interpretation of, for instance, fixed costs? Uh, you agree with uh, Congressman uh, Conseco and Congressman Henserling and their uh, comments with regards to previous statements made in December. Uh, with regards to Mr. Renese, you allow that uh, you're taking surveys that allow for fixed costs to be considered in your in your surveys, and and to, and you're doing everything I quote, doing everything to get this right. Yet in your written testimony, your written testimony says the proposed rule interprets the incremental cost to be the exclusion of fixed cost would be required. Which one is it? Well, it is actually both. So oh, now, 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 yes let, or no? Which me try. <laughs> We're let not going try. there. I'm not going to take up my five minutes either, very quickly. Which one is it? Is it, is it, are, are we, are these guys right? Is your verbal testimony correct or is your written testimony correct? I'm afraid I don't see a conflict and I, I, I could explain. Well, I'm sorry, I see a tremendous conflict when you say in, this, in your written testimony, Written testimony, it says, proposed rule interprets the incremental cost, dot, 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 the inclusion of fixed cost as required. I, there, there's a huge incongruence there. Well, fixed cost may be considered for purposes of the fraud protection adjustment, and, and maybe that, that helps. Okay. Moving on. Uh, have you done any studies yet to show um, how the banks are going to make up the losses that they're going to incur? as a result of not being able to uh, charge an appropriate fee for these interchange fees? Um, no, we've not done explicit. Okay, as a regulator, as a regulator, does it concern you at all when you see that the industry is going to lose $12 billion? That your banks are going to lose $12 billion of income at a time whenever they're, a lot of the big ones, in fact, are a very tenuous situation? Does that concern you at all as a Fed regulator? Well, we always look at the loss of revenue streams as a potential safety and soundness matter. Um, so yes, our examiners would look at this uh, very carefully, depending on the particular profile of the bank. How's, how, are you going, how are you going to mesh what you're doing with this rulemaking with what your regulators are going to do? We're going to mesh it very carefully. So we're going, to make, we're going to make sure that once the, a rule is finalized, um, that that rule is put into examination guidelines and spelled out very carefully for examiners that need to uh, need to make. So, are you going to make plan. adjustments for your banks with regards to the amount of income they're going to lose when I'm you come when you go examine them? I'm sorry, did you say adjustments? Yes. To the banks? Whenever you whenever you look at them and their their inability to increase their capital accounts, to increase their their profit and loss for the year, are you going to take that into adjustment? We will take this particular set of regulations, should they be made final, into consideration in our examination process. Okay, have, we're going down a, a very slippery slope here with this. And a minute ago, you made the comment, something to the effect that you agree that we need to be setting these prices so we keep those ones who are charging too much from charging too much, which basically you agree that we're price fixing here. And as a government entity to set prices on the private sector is unconscionable. We are taking a huge step down a road we don't want to go to because suddenly we're starting to treat the banks and the people who do the interchange fees, whether it's the Visas, MasterCards, the world, whoever, as a utility company instead of a private sector entity. Do you agree with that statement? No, I don't think that um, public utility, I don't, I don't see a... You don't, you don't see setting the prices for a, for a business by the government is the same as as setting prices for utility companies? I don't see this as price fixing. Well, you just a minute ago, you said that. You said it just a minute ago. You said that we need to set this price so that those who are, who are making more than this average need to bring their prices down. Well, I possibly misspoke, but I don't view what we're doing as setting prices. We have been told to set standards, and those standards have been promulgated and put forth. You know, I have a, have a real concern with the, with the direction of this entire bill, obviously. But what we're doing here is, is saying that as a credit card company or an interchange fee company here, we can't, we're going to allow part of, the, of your cost of operation. It's like telling a pizza place that delivers pizzas. We're not going to allow you to, cost, to put into your cost of your pizzas the person who drives the car or the car itself. All we're going to let you do is charge for the gas. And that's what we're doing here. And that's wrong. Where, where are we going with this? Um, have you looked at the possibility of what's going to happen if we don't allow uh, debit cards for a lot of folks, especially community bank folks, instead of using debit card, we're going to use a credit card? That is that, 
that's not going to solve the problem of, of uh, cheapening the ability of, of uh, the, con uh, the, uh, the merchants to, to, to lower the price of their products. But you're We're not accomplishing anything here, are we? Pardon? We're shifting one way of payment to another. Would you agree with that? This yes or no? This is something that the Congress has, it has in its prerogative. Are you taking that into consideration? No. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair.